So next problem. Read the question along with the figure. So if you see here in problems we did uh, the last problem and that uh, problem we did in the uh, last class you had only one rotor here this problem has two rotors rotor A and B okay so this is one rotor at the left end of the shaft and one more rotor at the right end of the shaft the shaft is having different diameters so the first step is we have to create this shaft into a single diameter equivalent shaft then we will solve the problem clear that is a basic idea okay the steel shaft 1.5 meter long is 95 mm in diameter for the first 0.6 meter of its length, 60 mm in diameter for the next 0.5 meter of the length and 500 mm in diameter for the remaining 0.4 meter of its length. The shaft carries two flywheels at two ends, the first having a mass of 900 kg and 0.85 meter radius of gyration. <coughs> so the left, left wheel, I mean the flywheel, okay. The shaft is having uh, uh, flywheels at the two ends. First is having mass of 900 kg and 0.85 meter radius of gyration. So, this is having 900 kg, 0.85 meter uh, radius of gyration located at the 95 mm diameter end of end. So, this is my 95 mm diameter end. Okay. So, this diagram may not be given in the exam for you. You have to draw it just by reading the question. You can understand it. Okay. Uh, and second, having a mass of 700 kg and 0.5 meter radius of gyration located at the other end. Okay. Determine the location of the node and the natural frequency of free torsion vibration of the system. The modulus of rigidity of the shaft material is taken as 80 giga Newton per meter square. Clear? Any doubts in the question? So, the diagram is self explanatory. You can understand everything. The diagram will not be given in exam. Please understand that. So, uh, we will proceed. Just write down the given data. Total length is 1.5 meter. So, diameter of the first portion is 95 millimeter, 0.095. So, the length of the 95 mm portion is 0.6 meter, diameter 2 is 60 millimeter, length is 0.5 meter, diameter 3 is 50 millimeter, length of that portion is 0.4 meter, uh, mass of the first flywheel I am going to call it as A, mass of the first flywheel is 900 kilogram and the radius of variation of the A flywheel is 85 mm, so, I mean 850 mm which is 0.85 meter and mass of the flywheel B is 700 kilogram, radius of variation is 0.5 meter, modulus of rigidity is 80 giga Newton per meter square. So, these are the given data. So, let us proceed. Uh, the first step is to find convert this shaft into an equivalent shaft. Okay. So, we are going to convert this into an equivalent shaft. So, I am going to change this configuration into this. So, that my calculation is simpler. Clear? So, that is the first thing to do. Uh, first of all, let us find the length of the equivalent shaft considering the diameter of the equivalent shaft to be D1. I am going to consider my diameter, first diameter in this given configuration. 95 is my first diameter. I am going to consider that as the diameter of the equivalent shaft and then I am going to find out the length, how much is the length of this equivalent shaft. Then we are going to solve the problem for the frequency. Okay. So, L is equal to this formula just now you have seen. If you choose one of the diameters among the three stepped shafts, the formula for finding equivalent length, length of the equivalent shaft is L1 plus L2 into D1 by D2 whole power 4, L3 into D1 by D3 whole power 4. So, write down the data. What are all these things? L1.6 D1.095, L2.5, D2.06, L3.4, D3.05. Substitute all these values into the above equation. L is equal to so L1.6 meter, uh, meter. Here this is 0.6 meter L1. So 0.6 plus L2 is 0.5. So 0.5 multiplied into uh, D1 by D2. D1 is 95, D2 is 60. So 95 by 60 whole power 4. In terms of meter, I am writing 0.095 by 0.064 4 4 plus uh, L3.4. Okay, so 0.4 into D1 by D3. D1 is 95 millimeter, D3 is 50 millimeter. So 0.095 divided by 0.05 whole power 4, 4. So if you solve this, you will get the equivalent length of the uh, length of the equivalent shaft, which is 8.95 meter. Okay, so if I am replacing this shaft with the shaft of a single homogeneous 95 mm diameter, I have to produce 8.9 instead of 1.5 meter, I need 8.95 meter to get the same angle of twist for the given torque. Okay, that, that is the meaning, right? So, length of the equivalent shaft is 8.95 meter. So, moment of inertia calculation. So, here if you see what is the uh, strain energy happening inside the shaft, we have to concentrate and first we are going to just 
calculate the moment of inertia of the two disc A and B. So, this is one flywheel and this is one flywheel. I am going to calculate moment of inertia, right. Suppose the node of the equivalent shaft lies at a point N as shown in figure. Uh, look here. So, the, the torsion is going to start from here and then go uh, reach a zero here and then go in the negative direction. So, strain energy is similarly depicted here. So, there is a nodal point N. So, from this nodal point, the distance from the rotor A to the nodal point is called LA and distance from the nodal point to the rotor B is called LB. That you keep in mind. Okay. So, that is what I am going to declare here. LA equal distance of the node from flywheel A, distance of the node from flywheel B is called LB. Okay. So, moment of inertia of the flywheel A, IA equal to MA K A square. MA is 900 kg, KA is 0.85 meter. Substitute the numbers. 900 into 0.85 square is 650 kilogram meter square. Similarly, mass and moment of inertia of the flywheel B, IA equal to MB into KB square. MB is 700, KB is 0.55. Substitute the numbers. 700 into 0.55 square, which is 212 kilogram meter square. So, you have found out the moment of inertia of the two flywheels. Next step, we are going to uh, find the location of the node on the equivalent shaft. What is LA? If you find LA, then you can find LB by subtracting from the entire length, 8.95 meter. Okay. So, we know that LA uh, IA equal to LB IB. So, please read carefully. Uh, that is why I have italicized the L. Do not think L and I are same. Uh, it is very misleading because you are uh, typing in a computer. Okay. So, LA IA equal to LB IB. Therefore, IA uh, IB. So, just now you have calculated these two. Uh, LA and IA do not know. I, I do not know both LA and IA. So, I am going to substitute these inertia values into this equation. So, LA into 650 equal to LB into 212. Therefore, LA equal to uh, 0.326 LB. Correct. I am establishing a relationship using this small uh, simple relationship. So, LA equal to 0.326 LB. So, we know that LA plus LB equal to L. So, LA equal to 0.326 LB. LB uh, total length is 8.95 equivalent shaft. So, LA in place of LA, you put this 0.326 LB plus LB equal to 8.95. So, simply I can calculate LB. LB comes around 6.75 meter. Very simple uh, algebraic method of calculating. Okay. With this, I can find out the remaining LA. So, subtract from the entire length, you will get. So, LB equal to 6.75. LA plus LB equal to 8.95. Therefore, LA plus 6.75, 8.95. Therefore, I will get it around 2.2 meter LA. So, therefore, uh, LA equal to 2.2 meter. LB 6.75 meter. All these lengths I am talking is in the equivalent shaft only. Actual shaft is only 1.5 meter. Okay, only the equivalent shaft is 8.75 meter. Equivalent shaft means it is having a single diameter. Okay, so LA is 2.2, LB is 6.75. With these two numbers in mind, we will go to calculate the location of the node on the actual shaft. Now, I am going to reverse these numbers and find out. One of the numbers you can reverse and find out the location on the actual shaft. Uh, location of the node on the fly, uh, node from the flywheel A equal to. So, you can do either from flywheel A or flywheel B. Anything you can do. Okay, so because you know LA and LB, both values you know now. So, LA, see, uh, you, you listen to this diagram very carefully. So, if I am going to project this line from the equivalent shaft to the actual shaft, I am going to project a line. It comes somewhere here. I know this is 0.6 already. So, I want to find out this remaining length and then convert it. This remaining length, see, this remaining length of this shaft and then convert it into a shaft of this diameter so that both will have same amount of theta for the given torque. That is how we are going to convert and this formula is already derived. You don't have to analyze all these things. Just substitute the values into this formula. Okay. So, L1, uh, L1 is 0 0.6. So, it should be start from the next line. So, it should be here. This should be here. Okay. So, 0 0.6 plus LA minus LB. Uh, LA is 2.2. .2, LB is, this LB means uh, point. It should be LA minus L1, not LB. Okay. So, LA minus L1. So, uh, LA is 2.2 .2 minus 0.6. So, this portion we are talking about. Multiply it by D2 by D1 whole power 4. Okay. So, this is LA minus L1. Please make a correction in your uh, things if you are writing. So, this is not LB. This is L1. Okay. So, 0.6. 2.2 minus 0.6 multiplied by 0.06 divided by 0.95 whole power 4. So, if you solve this, you will get 0.855 meter is the nodal location on the actual shaft. So, somewhere here. Okay. So, location of the node on 
node from the flywheel A on the original shaft is 0.855 meter. So, if it is not specifically asked in the question, please find the nodal location on the actual shaft. You do not have to do this. I am doing this so that you will know that you have to do this. Okay. Natural frequency of torsional vibration. Here you can do either either one of the things because uh, always the frequency of A will be equal to frequency of B because torsional frequency should be equal. You do not have to do two calculations. Okay. Polar moment of inertia uh, for a 95 millimeter shaft equal to C. One more thing. Natural frequency calculation should be done only with the equivalent shaft. Clear? Only with the equivalent shaft you have to do the calculation. So, polar moment of inertia comes around 18 to 10 power minus 6. So, natural frequency of free torsion vibration equal to 1 by 2 by root of Cj by Ia Ia. This Ia should not be uh, actual shaft. It should be only the equivalent shaft. Okay? So, calculation of frequency should be done only with the equivalent shaft. That is why you are actually finding the equivalent shaft. So, C is 18 to 10 power 9, J is 18 to 10 power minus 6, LA is 2.2 .2 meter, IA is 650. So, substitute all the numbers into the square root. So, 18 to 10 power 9 is the modulus of rigidity C. See the what is the formula? C. C is 18 to 10 power 9. It is here. So, J 18 to 10 power minus 6 by LA IA. LA is 2.2 .2 meter and the moment of inertia of the I uh, disk A is 650. So, if you solve this, you will get 3.37 hertz. So, that is the uh, natural frequency of free torsional vibration. You, you can write it like this. So, A and the, you have calculated only for A, but inevitably it should be equal to B because it is a torsion on a single shaft. Okay. So, F and A equal to F and B 3.37 hertz. So, that completes the problem. So, results you can sum up. Location of the node on the equivalent shaft from flywheel A is 2.2 .2 meter. Location of the node on the equivalent shaft from flywheel B is 6.75 meter. Location of the node on the actual shaft from flywheel A is 0.855 meter. Natural frequency of torsional vibration on the equivalent shaft FNA equal to FNB equal to 3.37 hertz. Clear? So that completes the problem. This is taken from your Fermi textbook 24.